touch with Jason Rose. Is that correct? Yeah, Jason Rose. Me. Hey, buddy. Okay, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm sorry it's been kind of back and forth. Um, like I said, we're we're working on something else out here in uh, California, but I'm getting ready to fly back in because um, we do this not necessarily as a hobby, but like a part-time thing right now. Um, so just a little rundown, just so you know, we're not trying to pull your leg on anything. So what what we do is I had 10 years of active law enforcement experience where I was an investigator, um, a narcotics investigator, but an investigator nonetheless. The guy that I'm partnered with, he just retired after 25 years. Um, and so what we did was we realized that there was a market to try to help people outside of it. Um, that, you know, unfortunately some law enforcement agencies just don't have the resources or the knowledge or things like that. So what we're doing is we're obviously we're not looking for a dime from you whatsoever. So I'll put that at ease, but we, uh, we look and try to use everything we can. So the high success rates that we're going to have is if we can kind of somewhat narrow down a last known location, um, and a vehicle being involved, right? So unfortunately I wish we could help everybody. But there's some cases where people just go missing or they walk off and we never see or hear from anything again or the family members don't. It's really hard for us to do anything on that. Now, right. with this, if there's anything whatsoever, and, I, and I'll let you go through the whole story. Like I said, I just want to give you the rundown of what we do so you kind of know about us. I'm not just some random dude, you know. A couple of hours or so, I'll, I won't take all that time from you. But if you can kind of run me through what's going on here, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. October 6th, um, I was at work, Raiden sent a text, he's like, hey man, I need 20 bucks for gas money now, and, you know, I messaged him back, I, you know, we, we talked for a few minutes, and he's like, Jay, he's like, I'm scared, he's like, I just left Florida, he's like, I'm never going back, mm -hmm. and he said, a car has been following me all day, I got the text message that he sent, this is at 11.33 that morning, I sent him a voice note, 12.33. I said, Bub, please tell me where you're at. I said, I can't do nothing for you if I don't know where you're at. And I said, I have no idea where you're at. And he went cold. So that's that's sometimes, you know, that's that's okay for Braden. He'll come on in from, from where he was working into Elizabeth and Tennessee, pick up his daughter, go spend the weekend, stay four or five more days and call Uncle Jay. You know, I'm his uncle. You know, I raised him. His mom died in 2013. She was murdered in Adrian County where, where, we, where this is from. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's nothing unusual, not, you know, not to go, you know, seven, eight days to hear from him. You know? Correct, yeah. So, I didn't think nothing else of it. On the 6th, you know, he didn't call back, so I figured, you know, he got the gas money and he's good to go, you know? Mm -hmm. So, a couple days went by, and I woke up on the 14th, and I told my wife, I said, hey, you know, I said, something's weird. I said, you know, today's eight days. I said, Big D's not calling me. I said, it's not normal. So I call his little sister who lives in Avery County. I said, hey, have you heard from Brady? And she's like, no. She's like, um, Katie filed a missing person report. Okay. I said, where at? She said, in Avery County. I said, wow. I said, okay. So I, I tried to call the Avery County Sheriff's Department to no avail. These guys, like, shut me down from the get-go. Like, sh I mean, straight shut me down. Okay. Like, yeah. nothing for me. You know, nothing for me. I'll get to that, too. Okay. And so I call the... the the baby's mama, the one that took the, the missing person report, and she sends a text message back to my niece. She said, I shut my Facebook off. I'm shutting my phone down. I pray y'all find Braden, you know, a bunch of blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay? So the sheriff's department starts looking. They get no leads, and, you know, we put the missing person out and everything, and then I finally get a tip from the Avery County Sheriff's Department, and they said that the last place Braden's phone pinged was on that they that they their last known location on Braden's phone was on 95 coming from Jacksonville Florida 95 is a big stretch of area yeah yeah, yeah 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 that was on the 6th they have nothing since then a girl spoke with Braden on October the 8th through Snapchat Braden told her he was in Asheville North Carolina that a stripper at a nightclub had stole his wallet and his phone and he was using another man's phone to contact her, and it went cold. Okay. I don't know, you know, a cheap phone ping, you know, it's not much. It was 1999, and I was just being curious, you know, because there's a lot of speculation that's always been around the girlfriend, my nephew and the girlfriend's dad and the girlfriend's brother, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, cause it's, it's, it, they're, they're, it's, it, it was really, it, my nephew was, honestly, man, you know, I even told the detective this, you know, I told the FBI this. I said, you know, my nephew was fearful for his life over these people, man. Yeah. And my nephew was at a point in his life where he could take his daughter. He had a wonderful job, 
You know, he worked for the union. He got a new, just bought a car a week before this. Just bought, he, he didn't even get to get his title back. Yeah. You know, he just bought the car. And um, this kid vanished on a four-year-old daughter, you know? Yeah, that's... And so, no, it didn't happen. Absolutely not. So I done the phone ping, and I don't know if you're familiar with Jordan Lake, North Carolina. Okay, hold on. It's in Apex County, North Carolina. Okay. It's, just, uh, it's like a natural park. Um, I done a phone ping on my nephew's phone. This is on October the 14th. I done a phone ping. And I have the screenshots of it. I done a phone ping on my nephew's phone and on her daddy's phone. And they pinged in the exact same location. And I showed it to the law. And they told me that I, basically that I was full of shit, that um, them phones could be 500 miles away from each other and pinged. I said, I get that. I said, I understand that. I said, but these two had to cross paths somewhere for their phones to ping together. Correct. And her dad has been gone for my nephew's been gone since October the sixth. Her dad's been gone since October the eighth. And her boyfriend that she was dating that nobody knew about, a guy named Richard, he disappeared on October the ninth, vanished. Gone. Everybody's gone and then on October the fourteenth she makes the missing person report. So he was actually gone a week before anybody knew it. Okay. And the last phone pings that y'all are getting is all coming from that the park Jordan, area up Jordan there? Lake. Jordan, Jordan Lake. Lake. Yes, sir. Okay, now, so when I just looked that up in Jordan Lake, that seems, and like I said, this is kind of where we, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off, but the Jordan right. Lake, it is, when we looked that up, that's a pretty big body of water there. Do you know if it's a campground I, or anything? I got the actual, I mean, I got the actual, like, the actual ping, like, the actual, like, boat dock ping and everything. I, I, I've had a lady, I know exactly where the boat dock is that it pinged off of and everything. I've had a lady that's actually went out there and got me pictures of the boat dock and everything. Like, I've been on this since day one, sir, and, and nobody, nobody will listen to me. Like, like the law, like, I know my nephew, I raised this kid. Me and my mom raised Braden. Braden was a good kid. Braden's 25-year-old. His birthday was October 29th. He just missed a birthday. He was a father. He worked for the union. This kid done good for himself, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, so He I, didn't just get in the car and drive off and say, hey, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Well, that's, and that was another thing I was going to ask you, like I said, just uh, from the investigator standpoint. And again, I'm not in any way doing nothing on the legal side of this. I'm just like, I'm trying to use what I know and what you know to combine those two. I've been, I've been praying for, I've been praying for somebody like you because I can't get anywhere. Well, I appreciate like, I've been that. Praying to talk to somebody like you. And uh, so the the biggest thing that I want you to understand is I, me and the guy that I work with, we'll do everything we can to help you, but I don't want you to have the false I don't want to give you some kind of false hope where I'm going to say we're going to find him. Now, we will do everything in the process or in our power to do that, but I just want you to know ahead of time there's some things we just can't control, okay? Um, but, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I know that, absolutely. Okay, but I, well, what I am telling you, though, is we will help you out in any way that we can. Um, so that Jordan Lake up there in Apex, is Apex, is that near Winston-Salem? It is. It's right, it's right outside of Raleigh. It's right off, honestly, it's right off 95. You yeah. know, 95 goes all the way through there. Yeah, so... When I looked at that earlier, because before I even talked to you, I was trying to basically reading off of the report or the flyer, you know, that I had reposted. Right. And so what I was seeing is, so that's not that far from our house at all. It's, it's less than two hours. But so obviously the first thing right off the bat that I was going to say, did you know, did he have any kind of mental health issues? Was he struggling with any kind of drug problems or anything like that? You know, now the, the mental health, now I, I will tell you this, he, he wasn't like, like mentally like, crazy but the girl that he was with like she absolutely drugged my nephew through my nephew was a 3.7 gpa in high school man went to school to be a lawyer yeah. and she drug him through the dirt my friend in, in four years okay so yeah his mind was he he but he didn't have a mindset to take himself out absolutely not not this guy yeah no no and like i said i'm not and again i don't want you to take that offensive anyway right, i'm not no, trying to say he is but no no I, i'm glad you're asking me the questions no i understand everything no you can ask me anything you want to and i'll be more than happy to tell you yeah absolutely i mean i have i don't have any problem telling you the truth about anything because that's 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 how you find people yeah yeah so and then once so the last time anybody had heard anything from him was the eighth correct the well, a, a little girl told the sheriff that she spoke with Braden through through a Snapchat um, app on, I guess, on social media, mm. and that a uh, stripper had stole his phone in North Carolina. And she was calling from Walmart. He was calling her from Walmart in Asheville. And I looked that up, and there's a, there's a small body of water because uh, the Asheville mop, the Asheville strip club that he's the only one there, and the Walmart that's a half a mile away. There's a you know, that's a little body of water there. You know, I just don't know, man. His car. I mean, everything just vanished. I mean, I, I just. 
yeah no I, I understand so so this is just to kind of break it down of the way that we'll process that so first of all good on you um as far as all that you've looked into it second thing i, I apologize you're not getting no more help from the law enforcement side um again coming from that area i know sometimes just from that side it seems like okay well maybe there's nothing to it or they they kind of gap it off i can't really speak on why they do the things that they do right that i was like i'm not i'm not knocking them in any way i'm just saying sometimes they don't or they just don't have the manpower or the knowledge right well that doesn't really help you at all so that's where we come into play on that but so what i'm going to do or what we will do so the jordan lake area um and then looking at that i mean that's a pretty significant size body of water and especially if you're pinging it right there on a boat dock i mean that's pretty telltale sign right like that's I mean, definitely it, a place that don't make sense i mean i understand that it could be i understand it could be false but i have both but i, I also ping my phone mm -hmm. and i also ping Braden's sister's phone and it told us exactly where we were at you know i mean it just i just don't it just didn't make any sense to me you know it just okay. like they like his Braden's phone honestly on on the 14th you know between the 8th and the 14th every time that we tried to call him like it, it was delivered but mm -hmm. he never like opened it and then after the 14th man it just you know the little blue when it turns it usually turns blue on facebook messenger yes like it, it stopped turning blue on the 14th and that i just thought it was weird man and the detective just he honestly he's like oh what did you use the cheap ass website he's like i'm a law he's like i know what to do i pinged his phone off 95. well if you pinged his phone off 95 you should know more than that mr you know what i mean you know yeah. he, just, he talked to me like i was like i was retarded and i'm not you know mm -hmm. i'm just i'm really really aggravated that my nephew's been gone since october the 6th and nobody has no idea where this kid's at and he's not ready he's not the big world kid you know he's not that guy man yeah and so and that's the biggest thing too so the the thing that's working for you uh it's just a struggle against time right so yeah and it's being pretty fresh i think we should be able to get something accomplished there now you said the jordan lake area the asheville walmart do you know the name of that strip club in uh, asheville I can, I can get it for you yeah so i saw where you were able to find uh the instagram page or the postings that we had up uh, any of that information that you've got right so i mean i'll look around and do everything because i'm i'm about 30 minutes from hendersonville and then obviously Asheville is only about another 45 from there, right? So that's pretty much in my backyard in terms of relativity. Uh, and then a lot of this stuff I will use and kind of triangulate it off, right? So Jordan Lake, I know that's a separate thing, but the Asheville Walmart and that strip club, what I'll do is I'll take a 10 mile radius of that. Um, now, if you can think of any friends he was staying with up there, yeah, I found out a couple that he's been hanging out, not in Asheville, but they're, they're from Avery County. But nobody, honestly, man, nobody had seen him since the day he bought the car on September the 23rd. The only reason I know that this, this kid was alive on October the 6th is I spoke with him. You know, I, I, I heard the kid's voice, you know, for 46 seconds. Actually, a video chatted in 46 seconds, you know. Where did where did he buy that car at? In Bristol? No, Johnson, John, John, Johnson City, Tennessee, off of Fireman. He's a fireman. That's all I know, man. Nobody, I'm telling you, this has been the, the most hush hush. I begged this detective. I said, just tell me a general area. I said, with me from different parts of the world that I've connected with over the last 28 days to look for Braden, and they can't even let us know where to go, you know? Yeah, so Johnson City, that's up near Gray and all that, right? Like Chucky, yeah, that area? Is. Okay, yeah, I actually believe it or not, I, I used to live up towards there. Um, So, pretty familiar with the Johnson City stuff. And then, is, is that where you're located at? You're in Tennessee or no? No, I'm in. I'm up in uh, Big Stone Gap, Virginia. I'm the uncle. I moved okay. to okay. North Carolina in 2017. Okay. All right. It was so good. So you're pretty familiar with that area as well, then, down in North Carolina. Okay. But I can come anywhere. I can. I can meet anytime you want. I mean, I'm not. I, I'm. I can come anywhere you want. You know, I've drove already. You know, I've been to North Carolina three times looking for this guy, and uh, to Avery County looking in people's yards and just looking for his car. You know. Yeah. So that car is extinct, you know, I mean that car is out there somewhere, you know. Yeah, and the only thing I was trying to think about that too was I was going to say, you know, it'd be in a not older but a newer. I'm assuming that's like a 2008 2012 model uh, like in Paul. Yeah, it's 2009. Yeah. Um I said if it was just the regular like civilian edition, the OnStar stuff, that would be awesome because obviously if they can't ping an OnStar, it's either because it's completely dead or it's submerged underwater. So those are the only two times it doesn't work, right? Um, even when it's like dead and not underwater, they're still able to do things with that. But if it was a police vehicle, then more than likely that OnStar capability got removed. So that was one thing that I was going to look at. Um, it did get removed. I, I called OnStar and explained to us. They put me through to like a supervisor and I explained that, you know, he was missing. And I gave him the VIN number to the car and everything. And she told me that it had been 
Okay. Okay. And then as so obviously you said he had some mental health stuff going on as far as dealing with I'm assuming you said the ch his children's mother. Is that correct? Yeah, he was trying to get custody of his little girl. Yeah, he was just, you know, oh, okay. I mean, his kid was just, you know, honestly, man, he was working himself to death. You know, he, just, he was just trying to, he was trying to get a, enough money to, you know, get a house and get his kid, you know? And he, he honestly, man, he stood in my kitchen, like, numerous times. He's like, Jay, if I ever go missing, he's like, you know, Katie's daddy, Katie didn't have something to do with it. And this girl, man, she shut us out, bro, like. And these cops don't understand this. This girl used to call us when her and Brayden would argue over soup. This little girl would call us and, you know, boo-hoo and boo hooing about it. She's a young little girl. Man, she shut us down. Yeah. So that, like, uh, and, and, but yeah. but, so you said she, once she messaged y'all, she deleted all social media, all everything? No, she's still on social media. She just won't contact us. Like, nothing. Oh, okay. Like, won't talk to us or nothing. Like, I've got numerous, reached out to her numerous times, just checking on my, you know, checking on garden, my niece. And, yeah. Um, nothing. Like she'll just like she'll send my my other niece, Brayden's sister, a message. Be like, still haven't found nothing. Drove to Asheville, couldn't see you. You know, man. She just nothing, man. She just and she's back in Johnson City. And she went. The thing about it that gets me the most. My nephew's not been a resident of Avery County in two years. Yeah. She her, her dad was a cop in Avery County seventeen years ago. Yeah. And she knows what kind of she visits. She's from that town, and she knows what kind of investigation would. What, she knew what would go on. That's and I, and I just man, I, I just know. You know, I mean, I know with all my heart. I know with all my heart that my nephew's somewhere, and these people know where he's at. Okay, all right. I uh, and obviously, like I said, your your family member and nine times out of ten family knows best when it comes to those kind of gut feelings and stuff and again like i said i, I just i had to stay neutral in all of that and just look at it from the facts and trying to locate him is our number one thing right but you've already went above and beyond on what most people would have done to begin with so that lets me know that you're you're serious and you know something's going on here um so basically what i can do from there is so I'm still in California. I'll be flying back out. Now, my buddy, he's going to be out here until the 15th, right? So he's going to be home right before Thanksgiving. Um, what what I would like to do is, again, I'm going to look at this Jordan Lake area. Because I'll be honest with you, that's where the phone's pinged at. That's where it makes the most sense. That would where we do our first sweeps at, right? So the way that that'll, the way that that'll work is... We just use a smaller boat. And again, I know you, you, you said you were familiar with it, but it's the same exact concept, right? It's not rocket science. It's not anything like that. But we'll get in. We'll we'll go the entirety of that, but especially it being right there near that boat ramp, that only makes more sense to start in that area. And again, it may it may just be the phone was pinging there, but if that's the last place it pinged and then it went dark, obviously, you know, common sense is going to tell us that's where I need to start first, right? Right. So... Again, I, I apologize. I'm not. It's not like I can sit here and tell you like I can fly up there. We can have everything up there tomorrow, okay? But we can definitely yeah, start, definitely start trying to get everything set up for us to get out there. Because I want nothing more than to be able to come over there and help you. But logistically, and then us doing this, um, really just on our own time and stuff. That's the biggest issue we have: is just getting up there and getting it done, right? But right. with you being so close, hopefully within. I don't know, before Thanksgiving, we can get up there because it, it won't take us, it'll probably take us a couple of hours to get up there and sweep it. And then there may not even be anything there. That's another thing I want to let you know. But at the same time, I can promise you that we will not leave without knowing what is in there. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. And again, I apologize. I wish, I, like I said, I, I feel bad because I hate telling you that you got to wait just a little bit longer because I know it's that's terrible. Hey, but you have to look for, hey, but you have to look for somebody else, man. That makes me, you know, hey, man, hats off to you, my friend. Bye. Bye. Okay. Yeah. But again, praying for you. I hope nothing but the best. And I hope that you do get that phone call from him that he does show up. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. all I can do and the reason we got into this was try to help people um, to, you know, just get those answers. Not, and sometimes it's not answers people would like um but it's it's answers regardless right so uh, again i'll do everything i can to help you if you have any information that you come across like i said all i'm going to do now is kind of put together just based off of yeah, what I we tell you something else man her daddy he is a certified u.s coast guard captain he's a fishing boat captain he goes on tours he takes people to jordan lake all the time he goes to lakes down on the coast like this man is an avid hunter and avid fisherman he knows his area man like he knows that area well okay all right. Yeah, like, um, yeah, it's it's a lot, a lot of effort. Like, it's a lot. Yeah, man. I just, I can't do anything. I'm, I can't, I just can't do anything about it. You know. No, and and I understand. 
but um but i 100 percent i believe it and you gotta understand like i said as far as the investigative work and stuff that i did i know when somebody's lying or somebody's trying to be deceitful on it and i hear nothing but you being truthful and stuff so i appreciate that and again oh absolutely i love this kid man i just want to you know we don't have no like me him and my sister and my niece that's that's all the rows that's left on my mama's side man like we're it and i just you know i I love this kid, you know, a lot. Like, I've been through a lot the last time. I know people, I, I feel for everybody that's ever lost a loved one that they never found, man, because this is bothering, like, my whole family, you know. Like, it even bothered my home life, man. I got I to gotta find my boy, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what we'll do. So I'll get to working on that. Um, obviously, you've got my information as far as reaching out to me. So if you need anything at all, man, uh, we'll be working on it. I'll do everything I can for you. I do want to let you know when we go to do the search, and it's not, it's not that we don't trust you, nothing like that, but we document it to try to help other people learn from what we're doing as well. So we actually yeah. will be doing videos on this. I just want to let you know that's okay. If you don't want to be free, if you don't want to be seen on them or anything like that, that's perfectly fine. We respect that. It's just we like to go over the methods and techniques that we use in order to share that. So it's not, we don't want just us to be the only ones doing it. You, you understand? There's, in South Carolina, there's 3,500 missing persons cases alone. There's a couple thousand in North Carolina. It's like if we can get more people involved with this, it's more of a movement type thing just to get those cases closed out, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'll, hey, I'll, have, I'll, I'll advocate for you any way I can, man. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind being on, on, okay. on video. I don't mind you being on it at all. Absolutely not, man, because that, that shows people you guys are serious about what you're doing, man. And Because uh, there's been some people reached out to a lot of people, and uh, you guys, man, uh, I respect you, my friend. Okay, buddy. Well, listen, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not trying to cut you short. If there's anything else you need to tell me, you can let me know now. But other than that, as soon as we get off the phone, I'm going to start putting some stuff together, okay? And I will be back and forth in contact. Do you have Instagram? I don't have Instagram, no. I just have a, I can, I can download it. I can, I can do it on Instagram if you'd like me to. I, don't, I, I can download it on the phone. I don't mind it a bit. I just never, you know, I never. Yeah, no, that's know. fine. Um, and the, the only reason I say that is just because of the messenger capabilities. And, uh, again, it's nothing against you or anything like that. It's just as far as phone numbers and stuff, I'd hate for... I would, we'll never sell out your information, and we just don't want you to throw out ours to somebody that might have alternative means. Oh, no, I understand. Oh, I understand that completely. Absolutely. Um, if you would like me to, man, I can, uh, I can, I can do the Instagram and just throw you some screenshots of some stuff that, um, that I know that I've seen, like the screenshots of the the ping and the, you know, the longitude, the latitude of the mm. boat ramp. I mean, I've got pictures of where the boat ramp is and everything yeah absolutely buddy but i uh greatly appreciate that and as soon as we get off here man if you need anything else just let us know i've been doing, I've been doing the best i can with, with the resources that i have and that's very slim my friend. yeah yeah no i understand and it's like i said i want you just to alleviate all thoughts of that right now whatsoever we're not asking you nor will we ever ask you for a dime for anything right so um we just know if we keep doing good eventually it'll come back and pay us pay itself forward right so that's all we're trying to do all right well, other than that, buddy, if you need something, just holler at me, okay? I mean, I appreciate you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good one. All right, so we are here in Apex, North Carolina. I believe it's Jordan Lake area. Um, we came up here, like I said, it's about three and a half hours away from where we were at. We got up here about 7 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock now. There's been a tornado warning for about the past three hours, but... As you can tell, it's starting to clear out a little bit. We just gotta make sure that all the rain gets past real fast. And then we should be good to go. Jordan Lake's actually a huge body of water. And what we're doing is we're up here in reference to the Braden Rose case. I think today makes 36 days that he's been missing. I've been in touch, uh, did a couple of interviews at this point with his uncle, Jason. Uh, we also filmed a podcast. We're going to air that later on. I just wanted to make sure before we got everything situated and started going public with it that uh, we kind of had everything figured out what was going on. Again, last known location that they had of this guy, he was working in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. He's got a daughter that apparently, like to most men, or fathers especially, the most important thing in the world to him. Uh, he left Jacksonville, Florida on the 6th of October. Um headed to Elizabethan, Tennessee, up near Johnson City. Never made it there. Uh, he was filed missing about a week later, and then the last known cell phone ping that they had was actually up here in Jordan Lake on the 14th, maybe even the 15th. It was closer towards the evening, I do believe. So that's why we're up here. We've got the boat, or we got the inflatable raft, got all the sonar stuff. I got our dive stuff, so now we're just waiting to be able to get in the water, see if we can't find a vehicle. Hopefully, and truthfully, 
I hope we don't find anything at all. Um, and I hope he's perfectly alive and well and everything's going good. But it'll also help out the family, you know, to we can go through and we can clear out the major boat ramps. I mean, this lake is huge. So, but as long as we can get the boat ramps and then that last ping location, uh, as long as we can get that cleared out, then we should be on a pretty good start as far as getting them helped out there. So, again, as of right now, we're just going to stand by. I believe the weather's pretty much let up at this point. Uh, we got a few little clouds moving through. But once all those blue skies get up there, we should be good to go. So, just wanted to kind of touch base, fill everybody in on what's going on. So we were able to get in the water. We've been launched. I guess we've been probably looking now for about 30, 45 minutes or so. Um, this area right here, according to that ping location that we got, that's going to be where the last cell phone ping was. Now we've looked the entire, or made a couple loops around there. Just not really seeing anything. Um, we've done side scans, and then we've done clear view as well. And, I mean, obviously, it's 14 foot, so, I mean, it's possible. But another thing that you got to take into consideration is getting that car back there. I mean, there's just really nowhere. I mean, at first, I kind of thought maybe just because it was cleared down, but I don't think that's going to be the case there. Don't want to look into it too much or make it be something that's not there. But right now, that's kind of what we got going on. Um, the lake itself is huge, so it's going to take us a while to go through and clear everything. But that's... I mean, that's where we're at right now so we started where the ping was we was able to pretty much clear or verify that that's clear there's no vehicle there and i don't think there's going to be a way for the vehicle to have gotten back or especially the white impala maybe like a four-wheeler or a dirt bike or something but definitely not that white car so that's what we're all doing. right so we finished up looking over there um right now we're only in a 25 foot of water anyway so we're going to head over here there's another boat ramp it's pretty close there's actually two of them and then we're going to search the boat on the roadway here just so that we can knock or knock all those out just to kind of verify so that way we're not running around in circles um as you can tell obviously it was storming something terrible this morning but now it's changed up the weather's gotten better but yeah so that roadway right there and you run into that bridge there's another boat ramp behind it and two boat ramps over there. So I've been in contact with the family. Uh, back and forth on Messenger. I'm gonna wait until everything's done. Obviously, call kind of give them a rundown. Found her. Go back up. Here we're just running basically parallel to the road. Trying to see if we can find anything on there. Something that I thought was pretty cool that I did not know until we literally drove over a road that was underwater was the fact that this was a man-made plague probably bad on me for not looking at that but i did not know just thought it was pretty neat but yeah apparently there was a whole road up underneath there we ran up on it just wanted to zoom in on that so you could see i mean it said 15 foot so obviously we're not going to run up on that one that's a whole roadway i thought it was pretty wild but it runs basically from there to way over yonder is where we actually ran into it just kind of wanted to show that finishing up Looking at the rest of this, some trash, things like that. But any vehicle, I haven't seen any vehicles. Did see two boats, but they were back more towards in the open water. Like I said, there's really no way that we would have been able to get a car out there unless it got like dropped off by a helicopter. So for now, we're just going through, seeing if there's possibly some more vehicles around here. Going to clear the bridge and then uh, clear those other two boat ramps, and then we're going to make our way to meet with somebody that's going to talk to us. So as far as the pings and stuff, so when we first got here this morning, when we dropped, we went all the way around this cove, and then because we're at ping dead, you actually go around this cove, and then take you out to like another little opening over there. Right. And we searched the entire area right there, so we went up and down numerous times, that way we could make sure we scanned it with the sonar, and then it kind of goes back into a, a cape, or a little cove back there as well. Okay. Um, we did it numerous times. It stays, so obviously it's got to be at least about 10 foot, 8 to 10 foot of water. And right. there were sections back there where it went to 5. Right. Now, 
not all of it was super super deep or a lot of brush and things like that the problem that we ran into was obviously we did not locate a vehicle in right. that area uh, right. so it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing and it's, so, but we made sure that we went all over there now as far as the phone itself being pinged there is a likelihood that maybe it is over there in the wood because it looks like there's almost like a little beach area there's a tent over there and i've been obviously i've been scared to walk down that way by myself um, yeah but there is a tent over there i took a picture of it and it was actually right where i sent you mm -hmm. the map where i was sitting yeah um i what? think he's able to survive if something like that happened but how so looking on the map so obviously we went there through the water but so we basically what we did was we did a big loop on the outside of everything so we started there ran that edge all the way until where that ping was and then went that entire length and then went to the road there right. which i guess this is a man-made lake because there was an old roadway it, in the water yes it's an old town and they just flooded everything they just let the dam go and yeah because that flooded was, it out because that was why because it drops down like four foot right over there there's and then, a road somewhere in here yeah. i'm not sure where it's at but it, it was an old town and they busted the dam and cleared out the town and pretty much but there so on the map though it was showing some kind of school that's it says temporary closed or something like that yeah like with a um, little dirt road what, what that exactly is, is that? back that way as soon as you cross over to bells mm -hmm. um i rode back in there because i've starred everywhere that i've searched yeah so that i know what points i've done it but there's a lot of accesses that i don't even know about some of these boat ramps are open 24 7. yeah so, but that's we're gonna go back out and go back across the bridge and as mm -hmm. soon as you hit bells there's a pull off on the left and you have to walk down to the beach that's where that tent at. and then if you keep going like more towards barrington yeah um that's where that school's going to be on left hand side because when um, there's subdivisions back in there like little housing pull offs because when we went uh this morning when we got here because it was storming real bad so we were looking at all the different access or boat access ramps we went up there to the one uh we found two this was 24 hours and then there was one that said non-motorized air yeah. access area and i think when we looked at that we had went over another bridge and it was farther back our bells was back behind us so when we turned yeah. around we tried to focus or get as close to that on land as we could but that area you was talking about where you can walk over there's another like right across the street from uh -huh. that you can drive down that little fishing area yeah that's where we we were sitting when you guys were over check clearing the bridges that's where we were sitting at um but there's not like car access unless he came through the bridge like over the bridge and um, that's a lot of things there's guardrails here and you tell kind of tell if there's damage but if yeah. it's a hydroplane type and it rained that whole week yeah. so anywhere from that point to is it's the ping that gets us because this okay. isn't a area you somebody just pulls up you know what i'm saying no and from the way that it looked before i pulled it up on google earth um it had it looked like almost kind of like there was a boat ramp right there but it was kind of more like a little dirt cut but it was that beach area that i saw whenever yeah. we went over there so and yeah. then got to looking as, as far as the likelihood of being able to get that car to drive through the sand to get down in there i don't i don't even know if that'd be possible without it getting stuck especially um, if it was raining real bad in the beach area yeah um i don't there well the one across the um the one across where the fishing pier mm -hmm. you can get to it from there yeah um but there's nowhere right there where that tent was there's nowhere to you can pull in there mm -hmm. but i don't think you can get the boat down there it's kind of a path that some people are beating down yeah but now back by that school that's like dirt and paved road you could get back in there but most of that backs up to landowners yeah. so their their backyard goes into the, you know pretty much the water that was our problem is i couldn't get far enough back in there to search that but i went from farrington to here thinking yeah. maybe he went off the road somewhere and there's sharon harris you know a lot the hall um the i guess it's the hall river runs into here mm -hmm. and then you have the cape fear mm -hmm. you know r runs all the way back down to wellington so there's a lot of aspects of water you're dealing with but this is the biggest mass yeah and that's and that was the thing so when we looked at it or i tried to divide it up basically to where the boat ramps were and my biggest priority was where the ping came from because i was like so if we can get over there and at least alleviate that the car is not in the water yeah and um, I was concerned about a boat ramp maybe pulling down there and just running it into the mm. into the water. That was my thing, and there are a lot of boat yeah. ramps. Um, some I probably haven't even been to, but my focus has been that whole side yeah. over there. Because there's another, like, so that road we were talking about where they flooded everything, right beside where that road comes out of the wood line over there, there's another old abandoned uh, boat, boat ramp there. Yeah. But every one of them that we went through, we checked this one, all the ones that they had around the bridges, things like that, 
and uh like i said that's just kind of where we're at with that we're looking we're right here right now so we're looking at this i know it's probably hard to see we're over here mm -hmm. so now we're looking that way as far as the ping yeah because that's what we ended up doing we that was the closest we were able to get to be able to go straight across so we ended up coming here got in and then just shot straight down through that way or yeah. at least that appeared to unless there was yeah. like a, another ramp we didn't know about but when we went that way i didn't see any more drop-in points for us now um, um how likely or what would you give a range for a ping i know law enforcement might be different they can hone in better on a specific location but when you're doing a, a general ping i don't see somebody coming from the south and it pinged in here when this wouldn't wouldn't even been part of his normal travel unless something yeah so and then so what we were talking about or when we did that um the podcast recording stuff we were talking about so he says he law enforcement told him that the last ping that he had was in walterboro yeah so if you look on the map come from jacksonville to either go up towards here or to go back up towards johnson city he's on 95 so that's where he picked that up they, um, that was a tag reader that actually called his tag yeah in walterboro um, I think they just pulled his phone, phone records um, for Jacksonville, just seeing calls were being made out of the Jacksonville Tower area, carrier area. Yeah. Um, but after that point, I don't think they've been able to ping his phone anywhere. The family was the first one to try when he didn't show up that day. Yeah. So that's the bigger aspect. But this is just not a place that somebody says randomly his phone pinged. It's here. Really, yeah, not over there. Um, but it, and as far as you, you ask, is how well is it as far as it pinging it? Now, some of them, depending on if it's Android or iPhone, which most everybody has, they're pretty accurate because yeah. they all have that track my phone stuff on them. Yeah. Um, now, the ping, again, is the only the only issue that you might run into it is if it's like straight talk or T-Mobile, which I think he said it was straight talk. But sometimes it's that's like a pretty big thing and that yeah. the numbers get recycled. So it's a little bit more difficult at times if those numbers have been reused a million times. Now, for it to pop up over here, though, the last he was heard from was the 6th, and then that ping the 14th, right? Yeah. So my biggest question on that though is for eight days nobody yeah he was supposed to pick up his daughter from what i understand from school mm -hmm. like back towards noonan yeah. and all that um, and he didn't show up and i guess that's when the girlfriend started the, the ex started thinking something was wrong yeah. um and i don't really want to go into too much detail yeah. on that um, however then the family was notified so just, Where's the actual missing? Are we in Avery County? No. This is Chapin This is, is kind of like your border. Um, Jordan Lake runs in like the border of um, Lake County. You have Chatham County and then you have um, Wake County. So mm -hmm. you're kind of like, those three counties are right, you cross through three counties. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's things that feed this or this runs off of. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at a 40 mile radius, you know, and this is the mass body of water. Mm. Um, I just can't, for the life of me, figure out why it's far north and not diagonal. Yeah, well, it makes no sense because, I mean, that's a pretty, but it's way out of the way. But he said, the last, um, his uncle said that, uh, Jason, that he felt somebody was following him. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's evidence of back and forth on I 95 near Walter and then abruptly stopped conversation with phones and everything. So, did he get lost trying to lose someone? Did he take a different route because he was trying to lose one that wanted them following him yeah. home? Um, just something, it's just weird that that's the last that was heard and then you get a ping over here. Especially, well, and not even just that, but I mean, it's like right on the edge of the water, too, yeah. in a pretty secluded area. And the, um, from what I understand, there's some fishing involved on the, um, ex-girlfriend's dad's side yeah um there is some like a u.s army boat ramp place around here somewhere i think it's back up towards barrington um might be just near seaford or whatever up the yeah. road. um i haven't been out there just because i don't know what if any permits or need to be ex army or, um, but it, it's a massive area and it just it's not something i'm local from this area i normally work try to work on like missing cases yeah, yeah. um and i don't i try not to get too involved in them because i'm, I'm doing my master's for crime scene investigation but some, some it's all because my kids live in this town 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing too. Like that's why we. I mean, we know how it works, but this is just it's super strange. And there's always that why and then the what is yeah. thing, right? So that's what we try to figure out. But with the car, I I thought for sure, like once we got up there, that it would have been at least. Yeah. I really thought it was just going to be there. And you have a like a more swampy area on another part of another bridge. There's like two bridges. Over. There's one here, and then there's like one over that way. Mm. You can see the highway from here. Yeah. Most of them have guardrails. You could see damage, but there are a few areas he could have kind of gone off at an angle. Um, the only reason, really, um, Asheville, I probably wouldn't have jumped on something like that. I would have spread the flyers because mm. that's where he's missing out on the Xavier County in Asheville. Yeah. Um, but because. Jason said, you know, we have a ping for here. I'm like, man, that's like 20 minutes away from me. I mean, P Ridge Road, you know, right yeah. up my husband works there. So I'm down this way daily. Well, that's what's crazy to me. I don't understand, like, why the whole conversation is about if he, the last he was heard was the sixth and then the girlfriend on the seventh was talking about he thinks he was dead and things like that. But he, then he gets reported Avery County, if that's in Asheville, that's like five hours away from here. Yeah. So I don't okay. understand. You got five hours and you got eight days that are unaccounted for that nobody knows. Um, and there's so many more towers that you see. There's a tower back that way, but there are so many more towers within a 50 mile radius than that one that he should have pinged off of. No. That's the part. Better towers. He would have got better service. And you know, your phones don't always ping off the same yeah. your carrier. It's wherever you get the best connection. So that part threw me for a loop. But this water is traveled a lot by boats. Just people, um, they have the little sailboats out there where they do classes. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I even thought about going back down there with someone and checking that tent area because I, I would have put it past him to, he would know how to survive if he had to for a little while, mm -hmm. um, possibly buying a tent or something. But from my understanding, he didn't have access to his money, so he had asked to borrow money. Yeah. Um, and $20 tells me that he was close enough to have tried to make it home. Mm -hmm. So that's the something between Walter Burrell and here. and. He could have still got home, but it would have been a straight up and a, a far left. Yeah, if he stayed on ninety, if he stayed on ninety five, they got on twenty six. Yeah, but he stayed basically just took ninety five all the way up here. And right? there's seventy something he could have taken just past here that would have gotten off on five forty. Yeah, seventy seven. So that's why. Yeah, that's why I said no. That just don't make no sense to me. No. Um. So I jumped in because it was so close, and I'm down here every day, you know, with my husband's job. So. Um, it, it is something I hold close to my heart is um, missing people and closure. But, yeah, um, absolutely. And then because I mean that's the worst thing in the world. I couldn't. I mean, you see it all the time, or you hear about it, but to yeah. be a part of it or see somebody that actually has a family member missing, you know, that's rough. Yeah, and I, I mean, my brother was that way a, a couple months ago. We did find him; he was fine. Mm. Um, but it took someone putting their feet on the ground, so yeah. we didn't even know. Distributing flyers, which is something I told Jason I would do after y'all search because I want to draw attention to the area. Yeah. But I will still put up flyers, laminate them, um, to kind of get people. It's the car. Somebody's got to remember the car. Yeah, the car is um, somewhere. I mean, you don't, I mean, unless it's underwater or buried in the ground, um, it didn't just disappear. I've done I've done things personally to try to track that. Mm. Um, even as far as got phone back on, so we're hoping something hits somewhere. Um, and eventually it will. I just don't want it to be one of those occasions where 20 years down the road he's pulled out of a different place, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think they're focusing on every water aspect near travel from Walter here, and this just happened to be the first one we were focused on. I don't think law enforcement was focused on it because they didn't have the same information they had. Um, but I think they're headed in their own direction, and naturally the family's going to do whatever they, they do outside of that. You want to question whether law enforcement is putting their best effort forward. But. Well, you got to question it anyway, you know, because there's 120 yeah. something thousand unsolved cases all yeah. over, you know. So, but as far as what we were able to do, I can say without a shadow of doubt, you know, it only the deepest part that we've came across was actually right over there near that old or that other rail, and it was 34 feet right there off the end. But over there where he was at, or where the ping was at, was anywhere from like 15 to 7 feet. Right. So it wasn't deep at all. And I mean, it could have been simple as someone threw the phone in, you know. We don't know. Somebody could have hijacked him, took his car. You know, that might be how his tag got on the scanner. We haven't had any verification that it was actually him driving the car, mm -hmm. we assume. Um, there's not a lot of answers in it. He's not my family, but he's someone's family, and it still means something to me. And if it's in my area, I do what I can to help.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's how it is. So help out anybody that we can. But that's uh, like I said, and I'll 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 reach out to him, call him, talk to him, and let him know. I mean, we documented everything from where we was out there. But our biggest concern, and again, I know there's a ton of bodies of water out here. But the one that hey, made the most. Here's the next one. That's a rough one, though. I mean, if you're going out there, be prepared. I mean, yeah. they do tubing and stuff down it, and people take other boats. But I, I just hear it's rough water. So. Yeah. But we started where it made the most logical sense. That yeah. was the last ping that they had, so we wanted That's to make sure that we too. got that. I kind of worked backwards, and then I went a little more northwards towards Farrington and come back this way. Um, but I can only do, do so much on foot. I can physically walk, but I can't see in the deep water. Yeah, no, I understand. But we, I mean, we, I know the family very much appreciates it. I, I can't tell you how many times Jason has said, please tell them thank you. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll do anything to help them. And like I said, I mean, this doesn't mean that we're done. I just... We have to kind of regroup a little bit and, and see what's going on there. Um, but there is Sharon Harris, so I would keep that in there because that is in a radius. I tried to do a 40 mile radius. Mm -hmm. And I did that because when they got the ping here, they used the same system. And I went home and they pinged me. And we did an overlay to see how far away from home I pinged when they yeah. used that same system. And it was 43 minutes. So I'm thinking 40 mile, 45 mile radius. Yeah. So we're thinking that ping is going to be within a 45-mile 45, 45 radius. Um, and as far as, you know, so obviously we know the vehicle's not over there, <clears throat> but it's, there being something on land, that's another thing that you run into. I don't know how North Carolina does, but like with us, I've got a bunch of buddies that do search and rescue dogs, right? So you've got different, and I, right. I hope nothing's wrong or has happened to him, but they've got cadaver dogs. They've got all kinds of other things, giant and bloodhounds they could track, things like it's, that. It's harder when he's not from this county. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes it even harder because even though he had a North Carolina license, his car's registered in North Carolina, to me that makes him a North Carolina citizen. No. But he was traveling back and forth, Florida, Tennessee, North Carolina. He passed through multiple states, so the outside agencies, until Avery makes a hype out of it, they're not going to expand extra resources yeah. you know, <laughs> outside of that. Um, it's it's going to have to have attention drawn to it. and probably a little more validity to it to, for them to bring out dogs and search. Yeah. Well, I was sorry, I as far as the law enforcement that. thing, now I can reach out to the people that I know. I'm sure they would be more than happy to at least attempt it, you know. I mean, any. I think anything to kind of clear the mind a little bit, there's a lot of speculation and what if, and that's where Jason's rolled from day one. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of suspicion and um, a trailer involved, you know, so. And, and I don't put it past it because I've seen I've seen what people do. Um, oh yeah, no, I'm definitely people can be. But I people. think a, a land search close to that area, like I said, the first place I check is where that tent is. But I won't go down there by myself because it's so close to water. I have my kids. Mm. Um, but um, and you said you can access that by that place I was talking about where you drive yeah, down. It's the make, one right across. Yeah, if you make a left out of here and cross over the bridge, it'll be on the right hand side. But across the street is the walk down to the beach area. Yeah, and there's. Back yeah, well, I mean, I don't have no, I don't, I'm not, obviously, there's since no you got there. That's what's weird about, there's no car there. That's yeah. what's weird about that. If someone's just camping, you know, there's nowhere right there for them to leave the car. That's all we can really do, you know, especially being public. I, as soon as we leave here, we'll just go over there. I will pack that stuff up. We'll go, I'll clear that out and make sure. And then from there, just regroup, reach out to some people, see if I can't get like either North Carolina, I don't know anybody that does the search and rescue stuff in North Carolina, but South Carolina, there's a volunteer group I'm pretty, pretty good Some friends with. Some of this with. is um, like state parks. Some of it's probably considered park ranger monitored by the park rangers. I'd probably speak with them, but um, you're looking, some of this is Chatham and some of it's Wake. So you got to figure out what side that's on and group with them. But um, yeah, it's people on your side. I was like, yeah. it'd be crazy not to. I mean, there's and that's that's the good thing about it. I mean, we've got the paper trail. Somebody would run into it. And if anybody really wants to push the issue of us looking for a missing person, then you know, I'll deal with that one when we get there. But need anything else from us? It was nice to meet you. I'm gonna get all that stuff packed up, I'm and then good. we'll go check that um, tent out. I do, I do appreciate you guys coming. I know y'all don't ask for money for none of the families, mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that. But I do want to make a hundred dollar donation to your cause. Well, thank you. Are you sure? Um, yes. Well, absolutely. Um, well, I appreciate that. It, it means a lot. You would travel that far, and. Mm -hmm. um, that'll help with something if not with this then something going forward but yeah you know on your travel you're from south carolina i take it so yeah, on like your it. travels back you now know that there was at least a tag ring in south carolina so if you see a spot we were thinking about um lake marion out there off 95 yeah that's another possible um we're kind of working from walterboro forward and yeah. 
I really think at some point Jason's going to be getting in the car and stopping everywhere he thinks. And I know how it can pull families apart sometimes. So it helps to have outside people in different locations. Um, I do what I can. Um, and like I said, I'll put the flyers out here. But it, it just takes coming together as a group and everybody being yeah. on the same page. And just and bringing exposure, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. The more people oh, yeah. that see it, somebody knows something somewhere. They may not think about it, but then they're like, oh, yeah, I recognize that. So that's kind of what we do. But like I said, we're going to get all our stuff ready. We're going to get out of here. We'll go check that out. Um, okay. The podcast, we'll edit it. All the video stuff, we'll edit it together. And then after I talk to him, then that's when I'll publish everything, okay? All right, I thank you. Yes, thank ma'am. You guys it's nice to meet you. Thank you. Very well. So I know everybody was going to ask anyway after the interview about this tent that she was talking about. So we came down the trail, and I'll walk back out of here in just a minute. But this is going to be the area she was talking about. More of like a, just a lean-to. Uh, we kind of searched around the area. It doesn't really seem like anybody's been staying there for a while now. And I do wish that we were able to find that cell phone, at least just laying here, you know? I mean, now granted, I know they're not always 100% accurate, but it would be nice to see it laying. Uh, this is on the opposite side of where we put the boat in. And that's really all we've got going on. McDonald's box. We looked at the trash, didn't see anything there. Got a pack of cigarettes. Just a bunch of trash. And we looked through there, there was no receipts, no anything like that. So, but as you can tell, it's straight across from the boat ramp that we was at. So, what we're going to do now, I'm going to call, call his uncle, talk to him, kind of let him know what we did, what we found out, and then regroup from there. So, the car was definitely not in the in the water mostly because the deepest part of that lake and she did confirm that it was man-made so the deepest part of that lake is 34 feet we were anywhere from 13 to 20 foot um but right there near where the ping was coming from or that general area it was pretty shallow but i'm pretty sure i showed some of that but we'll talk to him regroup i'm gonna see if we can't do something um she said they had the phone reactivated, so I'm not sure if they're going to re-ping it again. I'm sure they will, but we'll just wait to hear from them. And we're going to head the head on the road back to the house. However, if anybody knows anything about the case, if anybody's seen them, if anybody thinks they've seen them, make sure that you call in. There's all kinds of confusion as to what happened, what took place. I could try to differentiate between all that and pick out facts, but at the end of the day, there's only maybe one or two people that knows where he's at. So that's what we're gonna do. See if we can't continue to try to help them find them. Unfortunately, we didn't locate anybody, but at the same time, it may be a good thing. Gotta stay optimistic and really go from there. But the one good thing were that cell phone pinged it. We were able to get rid of it, or any doubt, as far as that vehicle being back there. It's extremely difficult for a car to even get back there, if not impossible. So I don't think that was the case at all. So I'm not sure. He may have been close and it just pinged off another tower. But we'll find out but if you would just make sure you like comment and subscribe and if you see something say something can you hear, can you hear me better now I can. all right good yeah no so we were at that uh crossing something the boat center that's up there right right all right so we went there we went straight across we basically skirted the entire edge of uh that area where he was pinged so the deepest the deepest part of the water that we were able to find was 34 to 36 foot right over, over there towards that area where the phone is pinged um it'd be almost impossible to drive a car back through there okay now now the phone again i, I get the phone was pinged not the car but the uh so we actually we went through there we searched all the water uh when we looked in the water we didn't find any there was there, we found no vehicles okay now and we searched that entire area that was around it um now as far as the phone pinging, I spoke with uh, the lady there that uh, you had been talking to, or we had both been talking to, I guess, and uh, she was saying that over there was a beach area, like a recreational area, uh, and there was and there was a tent. So I ended up uh, once we got done, we got packed everything up. Like I mean, we I, I just got out of the woods about five minutes ago. We walked down there to the tent. Um, it had been, it had been there for a while. There was some old McDonald's wrappers um, and a pack and a pack of Marlboro Red cigarettes. He didn't smoke Marlboro Reds, did he? Wait, what was there? Other than 
Marlboro Reds. Some old McDonald's. Uh, there was a bag of McDonald's, and I there might have actually been two. I'll have to go back and look at the video. But I know there was an older bag of uh, McDonald's, and then a maybe a hot spot bag, some kind of gas station bag. He wanted smoke. He smoked menthol. He would have had a menthol pack of cigarettes. He smoked menthol. He smoked in the night of the Yep. But, but like I said, I wish, you know, I could give you some more, a more definitive answer on that. All I can say is that, for without a doubt in my mind, for that section where his be, be, or the phone was pinged, the vehicle is not there, right? So, I uh, kind of I guess we had to regroup from that area, uh, kind of see where what way you want to go, and that's why I, was, why I was explaining to that lady. The one thing I would recommend is, and I don't know anybody in North Carolina that does search and rescue as far as like volunteer groups. But if, just to kind of cross off the land portion of it, you could always try to find somebody that does bloodhound tracking. That would work. Um, I talked to the detective this morning, and he said that he was going to get a hold of the detective and ask him if he could get him to come out. Yeah, and and like I said, man, and uh, I mean, I know I mentioned it to you in the beginning and stuff. I don't. I, hopefully, there's no hard feelings. I mean, I really did. I tried everything I could. To, you know. Well, of course, man. You got it this morning, Joe. Four hours away from your house. How can I have any hard feelings towards you whatsoever, my friend? Yeah. No. no I, I, I mean, no, like I said, I just hate that I'm not able to call and give you some sort of closure on that. Now, that doesn't. Like I said, that doesn't mean that. I've completely given up on it. Meaning you're not in that water, there's still a chance this kid's alive somewhere. That is true. That is true. So, we'll, we'll take it as that, my friend, and um, I should be off work soon, and uh, I'm going to uh, send you a message on Facebook. I need a little information from you. Um, I got something for you guys, my friend. Okay. And like I said, so I'm going to get everything together um, because and I, we did, I videoed everything today. That way you can kind of see what's going on. and. You can see like the area there's just i mean it's impossible man as far as the vehicle getting there um like i said i i I'm, uh, i feel bad because i'm not able to give you an answer but at the same time i'm relieved because he wasn't there you know what i mean like that still gives you hope so you being in law enforcement and your buddy being you know ex-law enforcement you see those phone rings i get that they've been together could that tower had been that wrong and that thing come off with these guys on the gray and see each other I and like I said, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. However, through what I know or what I've experienced with that, I, it is highly, highly, almost impossible, I would say, for a phone to be pinged on another tower from almost 500 miles away. And if two phones pinged together, that's crazy. You know, that is crazy. Yeah. Um, but I do got a lady that messaged me about a fuck this morning. Um, she's actually. If I could be of any assistance or any help whatsoever, you just let me know. And uh, if, like, and again, I'm not telling you that I'm completely done. I'm just telling you, like, obviously, we have to. I got to kind of wait now and do a little bit more research and then see what else we could do. You know, but that entire, exactly, exactly. like that 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 whole area, though, as far as that body of water, like, we went over it. I mean, numerous times. I think we ended up after that storm got over. We we got in the water at nine and we got out. 30 minutes ago to go to that tent, so 10, 11, 12, 1. So about four or five hours straight of us going around scanning. Yeah. 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 Ye
I did find out something last night. I was looking on Facebook, and there's another guy that the only difference between him and Brandon is this guy doesn't have any facial hair, and he has green eyes, but he's been missing in the exact same area as Brandon did two weeks prior to Brandon, and he's been offered a job in Jacksonville, and this kid got there, and he disappeared. 28-year-old, vanished. And him and Brayden has so many similarities that it's crazy, man. Like, it's really crazy. Yeah. Someone seen a movie last night. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And that what is... Is these guys have. And that, that is something that I recommend to you, too. I mean, a lot of people may think certain things or thoughts are crazy or something like that, but I'm telling you, man, if you, if you get a gut feeling about something, that you need to tr- trust your gut 100%. Well, you know, that's why, that's why you reached out to me. You went to Norton Lake and I was real... I was real hard on that one for the longest time, man. But now I can mark that off my list and go somewhere else. Like, I've got, you know, he's out there somewhere. Like you said, someone knows something, and uh, we're going to find out who knows what. Yeah, it, my recommendation to you, and like I said, I can't get involved really on that side of things just because I don't want, I, 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 I can't do that. But I recommend, if you if there's any way possible for you to find out something that will really help you out, man, is somebody has to account for those eight days that he was gone before he was reported missing. Like, somebody knows something. I don't know, I'm not telling you who to talk to, I'm not telling you anything like that, but if you can figure out what happened in those eight days, then you'll figure out what happened to him. I think the same exact thing. We just gotta find those eight days. You know, gotta get a timeline for those eight days. Yeah. Right. I thank you very much. Yep. I get home. Be looking for a, a, a message from me, and um, I'm gonna figure out some information from you. Uh, I'm not sure if you got a uh, Facebook pay or anything like that. Okay. But um, if you don't, I've got cash app also. I just want to, um, it's not, you guys didn't ask for anything at all. I know that already, but it's just, you know, it's the way we do things in the South, right? Yeah, I, I understand. Take care of one another. Well, I appreciate it, man. And like I said, I do. I apologize. But if there's anything else I can do, you just let me know. I, mean, I appreciate it.